Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to those of you joining us from home as well. Um, I am here in place of Pastor Katie. Obviously, I'm not Pastor Katie. <laughs> I think you all noticed that. She is at an ordination with her family this morning and has asked me to be here in her place. So I am here this morning. I am Lorna Blackford, and I am a student in training to become a pastor. So she has given me this opportunity to preach for the first time here for you this morning. So be kind. <laughs> My family is here today. I have my husband, my three children, and one of my three grandchildren here today in the front pew. So I, I welcome you guys and thank you for coming to support me as well. Um, are there any announcements? I have a couple, but are there any other announcements that I'm not aware of? The Faith Earther and Church's duties at the food pantry are this month and next month. There will be a truck coming tomorrow morning. They ask that volunteers be there by 9.15. And then distribution is the following Saturday uh, from 8 to 10, 10 at the latest. Uh, they ask people to be there by 7.30 for instruction. Thank you. They also ask for you to wear a face mask. Oh, yes. yes. Face masks are required. Um, also, uh, the, another announcement is there is a graduation celebration today for Dane Libby. It's uh, planned for 1 to 4 p.m. at the Oneida Fire Station. So, just wanted to make sure you guys were all aware of that. Any further announcements? Well, let us now stand together and confess our need for God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Amen.
Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace for the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings, verses 9 through 18. At Horeb, the mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountains before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm for the day is Psalm 85. Let us read it responsibly. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. True, your salvation is near and near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall have prepared for God a pathway. The second 
reading is from the 10th chapter of Romans, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does the word, but what does the word is near you, on your lips and in your heart? That is the word of faith that we proclaim. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from dead, you will be saved. For one believes with his heart and so is justified, and one confesses with his mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who come before him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are to see it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Word of God, word of life. And thanks be to God. Sea 
has water in it, right? So that represents our C. And I have some objects that we need to put in our C to make it look more C-like, okay? So um, if I could get some help. Um, Jackson, would you like to put that in? I know his name because he's my grandson. I'm sorry I don't do it. <laughs> Go ahead and put it in the water, and it swims around in the water. Okay. Okay, so um, I need someone to put the boat in. What's your name? Blaine. Okay, Blaine, can you put the boat in so it floats? Thank you. Very nice. It floats really well, just like your fish is swimming in there. Okay, we have some disciples. The disciples were in the boat, weren't they? Could you put our first disciple in there, in the boat? Okay, nice job. And what's your name? Jayla. Jayla, okay, you did a great job. And your name is? Bryce. Bryce, I have a son named Bryce. My son Bryce is right there. <laughs> okay, so Bryce, could you put another disciple in here? Okay. And I have a third disciple. What's your name? Jake. Jake, Jake, could you put this disciple in there? Okay. And we have some sea stars to go into the sea as well. Okay, so does that look like the sea? Looks a little more like the sea now, right? We've got the water, we've got the fish and the stars in the sea, and we have a boat floating on it, right? So the disciples were out there floating on the boat. And what did they see? Do you remember from the story? They looked out in the middle of the night and they saw a ghostly figure walking to them on the sea. Who was that? Jesus. That was Jesus, wasn't it? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put Jesus walking on the sea. Okay? So I have my Jesus. Forgive the fact that he's bald. Okay, so this is my Jesus. And we're going to sit him on the water. Oh, well, let's, let's try that again. He's sick. Okay. Here we go. Oops. What am I doing wrong? You guys got all your stuff to float. Any ideas? We should get him out of there. It's because he's, he has a lot of air in it and, and he sinks. So you think he sinks because he's got a lot of air in it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? I think um, under him has a type of coin and the coins sink and you put them in the water. Oh, so yeah, you're kind of hitting on this density concept. Yeah, and <laughs> if floating and sinking usually has something to do with density, doesn't it? And I tried to make him float because you know I knew my plastic people, you know, might not float. So I, I gave him a surfboard. Did my mm -hmm. idea work very well? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Um, I thought it was a great idea, but it didn't work that well. And so I couldn't make him walk on the water, could I? Who do you think can make him walk on the water? Who is he the son of? Jesus is the son of God. Exactly. Very nice. Jalen? Right. Okay. Very nice, Jalen. Okay, so in this in this story, he actually walks up oh, one up. Christ is to pray, to pray to him for those things 
that we really need in life. And he answers our prayers. Now, it may not always be the way we expect, but he answers our prayers. And if you really need something, he'll make it so it's possible for you to get it or to be able to do whatever it is you need to do. Okay? Now, normally I'd ask you to join hands for us to pray, but I'm going to just say the prayer myself. So if you can hang your heads, since we don't hold hands during COVID. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance to learn that through you all things are possible. We thank you that you are always there to hear our prayers and to help our prayers get answered, even when they don't get answered in the way we expect. Help us to listen for your guidance as we live our daily lives, always remembering that you love us and, like a parent, are always there for us, listening to us, giving us comfort, and showing us the best path to take. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going back. Thanks for your help, you guys. You did a great job.
drained, I become. I feel weary. It affects my teaching, my ability to work with students. It affects my family. It affects my ability to serve God in the way that He would like. Because I have become distant from Him. It isn't intentional, but the effects are there nonetheless. How did it happen? The distractions of daily life naturally fill up our time if we let them until we are so busy that our busyness drains our enthusiasm and our energy. Reading the Bible regularly helps, but it's not as fulfilling as taking a, a moment, a, a few hours even, to devote to prayer and Bible study in solitude, away from all the distractions and duties of everyday life. In our Bible study that we make daily, we often study the words and parables of Jesus, but we should pay just as much attention to his actions, because he's teaching us through both. Looking back at our passage, we read that the disciples were on the boat, far from land, battered by the waves, for the wind was against them. Doesn't this sound like what has happened to us in our lives today? Last March, our world was turned upside down. We became isolated from each other. We, were more, we got, became concerned for our health and the health of our loved ones, our children, our elderly, the immunocompromised in our society. Many lost their income, and our nation is faced with economic uncertainty. Racial injustices have caused rioting in our streets. People post their concerns for themselves in this world on social media and get met with antagonistic responses instead of the support and encouragement of their friends. The winds of life seem more like a hurricane in 2020 and the waves are crashing against us from all sides, especially within. Yes, I'd say that our lives are very like those of the disciples on that boat long ago. They left his side to do as Jesus had told him, told them, travel to the other side of the Sea of Galilee to meet him. They were just following his instructions, but the world tossed them about. Isn't that what we are trying to do? Live our lives the way God has asked of us, using the talents and opportunities he sets within and before us. We care for his creation and for the people that he places in our paths. Yet the world and all of our busyness of doing can still allow us to drift farther from God's presence, even though we are doing exactly what we are supposed to do. We need to be intentional in reconnecting with Him, taking quiet time away from our hurried and harried lives to pray and listen to Him in return can help us with this. In our reading, Jesus didn't leave them on their own for long. Early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. The disciples who would follow him almost anywhere were frightened when they saw him. They just didn't recognize him. If you think about it, this too parallels our lives today for many people. God has not left us helpless to drift on the seas of life, battered by the waves and pushed by the winds of change in this world. He gave us the Holy Spirit, which is ever-present, to be a comfort and a guide to us. We are never alone. But we, too, don't always understand what we are seeing or feeling when God uses the guidance of the Spirit to open paths before us or moves us with His presence. It can make us fearful, frightened of change, unable or unwilling to see that it is Him, that He is showing us a path in this changing world. In 1 Kings, we heard that God did not leave his followers alone even before he sent his son into the world. The word of God came to Elijah on the mountain and made the Lord's presence clearly known to him in the silence so that he would recognize through his fear that the voice telling him what to do really brought a message from God. We see throughout biblical history that the followers of God, even the very disciples of Christ, became scared at times. When God is moving in your life in new ways, it's easy to give in to fear. Instead, we should open ourselves to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and pray 
that God's will, not our will, be done. In our gospel story today, we would face with an impossibility, a ghostly figure walking on the water. The disciples cried out in fear. But Jesus spoke to them, letting them know that it was him and saying, do not be afraid. In these times of fearful change that occur around us today, it is our natural instinct to react with fear and forget that God is with us. He is showing us how to navigate our own choppy waters and that we are sorely needed in the world right now during these uncertain times. We must find our place of quiet solitude, spend some time in prayer to God, silence our fears, and open ourselves to his will by saying, as Peter did, Lord, if it is you, command me. Command us to get out of our rocky boat that is sinking and trust in him that he will show us a better way for our world. God will not ask us to do anything without giving us the power to do it. We individually may not be able to cure this world of the pandemic, of social injustices, or of our economic crisis. However, we can remain calm, trust in God, and do whatever he asks of us to help our neighbors in need, to right injustices, to let God's presence in the world be felt through the actions of his church. It won't be easy. We will always battle this world and its distractions until we leave it to join him. But whatever God asks of us is possible. Peter found this out in our reading. At Jesus' command, he obeyed, got out of the boat, walked on the water towards Jesus. But he didn't keep his focus on Jesus. As his attention shifted to the world around him, to the feelings of the impossibility of his actions, he noticed the strong wind. Fear got a foothold, and his faith faltered. Beginning to sing, he cried out, Lord, save me! I know that I, for one, can relate to this. When I lose sight of God, I either lose faith in being able to do what's asked of me, or I just try doing it through my own power. Inevitably, I end up crying out through prayer, as Peter did, Lord, save me. How many times has God said of me, as Jesus said of Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? I don't think I really want to know the answer to that question, because even being a math major, I don't think I can count that high. <laughs> but the good news is that God's grace abounds, and he does not lose faith in us even when we falter. As we heard today in our reading from Romans, the same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Never stop calling on him, Lord, save me. He will always answer, and we must trust in him when his answer calls us to action. Recently, I began classes to become a commissioned lay pastor. I put aside my doubts and fear and answered a call that God placed on my heart long ago. When my friend, Pastor Katie, asked me to preach for her this Sunday, I'm sure I gave her the deer in the headlights look. <laughs> it was one of those moments when I could have quite easily let my fear take over. I chose instead to follow Jesus' example and sought a time and a place of solitude and prayer. Taking the time to discern his will about my request, or a request. My experience was similar to that of the disciples when Jesus and Peter got out of the boat. For them, the wind ceased. The boat was no longer tossed about by the wind and waves, and they said in awe, truly, you are the Son of God. As I prayed, my fears were extinguished. My inner turmoil was quieted, and his answer was made clear to me. So I stand before you today giving my first sermon. I thank you all for allowing me this opportunity to serve him here, answering the request he has made of me to share my faith with others, guided by his wisdom. I give thanks and praise to our God who will never lead us astray by saying before you this day, Truly, God, I can do all that you ask of me through 
through your power alone. Praise be to God the Father, Christ his Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Whom you have gathered to yourself, 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, take a moment to greet others from where you're standing, <laughs> in whatever way seems appropriate to you. <laughs> all provide your time, your talent, and your treasures. Pray with me now. Loving Creator, all, all creation comes from you, forests, lands, and prairies, wild places, rivers, and streams. As we bring our offerings to you, we ask that you bless them so that your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life, O oh God. We, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love for your word of life, O oh God. We give, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. If anyone feels the need to leave before we join together in the singing song, sending song, feel free to leave at this